Browning has just put out a beautiful film about stalking a morale stag in Kazakhstan using its auto-reloading morale rifle. It's nine and a half minutes of gorgeous landscapes and wildlife. But of course there is a lot more to making a film like this, as producer and star Alberto Rosini explains. Well, on, on the video it looks like that I arrived to Kazakhstan, I got on a jeep, I got on a horse, I found the morale, I shot the morale and I came home. <laughs> but nobody sees what actually went on behind it, you know. <laughs> we left Ireland on the 14th of September and uh, the plan was to return on the 29th, but we returned uh, the 5th or 6th uh, of October. Ready to go! There was me. Two crew with me that came from Europe, my staff, and then we had uh, support from uh, local local guides. Two guides came with us, and we had uh, a translator at base camp that we never used. The paperwork started in uh, actually around this time last year, so in um, in May we started all the, the paperwork from uh, gun licensing and government uh, approvals and. Uh, importation of camera equipment, authorization, aviation authority for flying a drone in the wildlife park. So he has taken, pre-production taken six months. Browning picked for their uh, self-reload weapon, the morale, picked the name, the morale. And uh, after being uh, hunting in Europe, we went to Africa and then we said we finish the, the morale saga uh, with the left hand morale that was launched this year. Uh, in Kazakhstan, hunting a morale, and that was uh, the conclusion of uh, the morale saga. It's a big red deer, it's the biggest uh, deer in the family, and um, it's, it's, it's pretty much twice the size of a European deer. This morning we have seen uh, the first morale, around 800 meters. We are pretty happy of the equipment we brought. It was very, very challenging because we are sleeping at 2,000 meters, and we went straight up to 2,600 in about 500 meters. It was very steep. To, to put it simple, we got in a jeep. We drove for six hours, basically a full day. We arrived uh, at uh, the last civilized town. We changed vehicles. We got into more extreme off-road vehicles. And uh, we drove into the night for another three, four hours. We arrived at base camp. There we divided our equipment. And uh, the following day we got on horses and we stayed on horses for nearly six days. Then we got a help from a jeep to help us continue our journey and we came back at base camp 12 days later. Now our guys, David and Tim, got on horses yeah. and it nearly killed them. I mean, <laughs> you, you, you have had some experience of horses, haven't you? I did, yeah. I've been horse riding all my life on and off and uh, I enjoy uh, being on a horse. Maybe my crew did not enjoy it so much after two or three days, but uh, I, I, I'd say I, I enjoyed it, yeah. Well, my parents brought me to Ireland when I was 11 years of age and soon I realised that the only way to call an Irish man was to learn their lingo, so... <laughs> but, you are, but you are, you're Italian. I'm well. Italian originally and uh, moved to Ireland when I was 11 and stayed there until now. We're having breakfast, noodles, the usual uh, typical sausage, some sweets. They, it was not my worst. <laughs> I'd say the Swedish sausage is worse than what I was eating there. but. Um, it was basic, it was uh, some bread, uh, warm tea, uh, sugar and uh, cold meat. That's what we survived on for, uh, for the 12 days, uh, more or less. Uh, it's basic, you just drink tea with a lot of sugar. They have this kind of uh, a soft cheese that you put in it, which is sweet. So I think if you use that diet for too long, you become a diabetic, but uh, it worked for us. Uh, I have to say I've lost uh, almost a stone and a half in, uh, in those 16 days, but uh, it was good. It was good uh, for the mind and for the health. <laughs> we still haven't got the morale. The weather's been good. Today we had a, an extra nap in the tent, so we're leaving earlier. We're crossing some, uh, some distance and we're going to uh, approach the morale that we have seen this morning. Alberto is used to this kind of adventure. If he was finding the trip tough, his European film crew was suffering even more. Uh, they didn't cope very well because uh, they were not used to the discomfort that a tent can give. And uh, also they uh, did not understand that by overdressing themselves in the tent, they had nothing to wear when they got out in the morning. 
So I let them do what I wanted for a few days until they they understood what I was trying to do. But it was very, very important for anybody that would go and experience such a trip to bring your own tent and to bring your own sleeping bag and your own mattress because they do supplies, but it would not be so comfortable as bringing a modern tent from Europe. And you made them grow beards? Yes, always. My crew, al <laughs> my crew always has to grow a beard to, to man them up a bit. <laughs> it's really tough. <laughs> We're never going to work together, you know. Yeah. <laughs> We're in unknown territory for me. We have a beautiful landscape. But the morale is very hard. Morale, <laughs> dude. <laughs> the typical plan is that uh, they take the client out for maximum two nights in fly camp. That's what they call fly camp out in the tents. But I wasn't happy to return because we we're going to waste a day to go back to the same distance. So I asked them to go forward and forward and forward. And uh, we ran out of provision after six days. And uh, we actually, because of the weight that the horses were carrying for equipment ourselves and all the extra things that they wouldn't be required usually for a normal hunting trip, they actually started uh, having bruises on their backs and uh, we couldn't use them anymore. So this guy appeared with a beautiful <laughs> jeep and in a, with a big American accent was like, do you need a lift? <laughs> uh, so um, we got into this car. The horses still followed us because we still needed them to, to move to the, to the hunting spot. And uh, I think it was after seven days, we actually had some eggs and bacon. Well, the uh, main camera is a Sony FS7 Mark II. Uh, Cine lenses for all the, the choreography. And for um, the long shots, we use uh, Sigma lenses, telescope Sigma lenses. So that's, uh, it gets very heavy and it gets very, very big. And uh, the tripods to, to sustain such a weight are are professional but they're heavy as well so yeah we did have to bring a lot of equipment and also to protect the equipment which made it even more bulkier and uh, and heavier to carry but it was selected that's why the six months pre-production we just had everything perfect and solar panels uh, which uh, to charge all our equipment every night uh, beautiful landscapes um, but not as much wildlife I as I would have thought to see I thought Kazakhstan, being seven and a half times the size of France, only I think less than two million people living in it, uh, almost one million just in the capital, I thought it was going to be the Garden of Eden, but um, it wasn't. Morale was hard found and any type of wildlife was hard found. Why is that? Um, I believe uh, technology arrived in the local communities and they used quads, scopes, uh, rifles and they've changed their survival hunting habits into a poaching fun habit. That's why Kazakhstan had to um, generate revenue to protect these areas and that's why they invite European people to go and, en and enjoy a morale hunt because the revenue has been given to the local community so that they stop hunting the morale for fun and they connect a value to an animal and therefore they start protect themselves. Because your guys are actually... Rangers, yes. Yeah. Uh, the, the park is, is, is very, very big. I have to say that I was, we, we, walked, we, we walked all of it. I've seen the whole area. I had two, two rangers with me. Another four rangers were patrolling the area. So two, one ranger usually takes one client, in my case because of the staff there was two. And while two are working with clients, four patrol the area. And still poaching was going on. We could hear sometime at night time Kalashnikovs and all different sort of things, which uh, it was uh, a bit strange, surprising, you know. It's been two days since our last update. We've been back to base camp. We've been uh, having an afternoon in a sauna, washing clothes, regathering energies. I zeroed the rifle at 400 meters. We came out here last night. We've seen morale in the area, but we think we're going to go back to that mountain range. So once again, we have to pack up all the Van Gogh tents, all the equipment, back in the car is the new addition to this uh, excursion. We went to the edge of the, of the reserve and it's also the borderline um, and we turned into a canyon and uh, we could hear them but it's a very very difficult place to hunt. So 
we made an agreement. I just needed to find a suitable trophy, which it was, but it was extremely, extremely difficult. Usually they don't bring people over there because it's dangerous and it's difficult. So I took the chance. We were very, very tired. It was the last uh, array, as, uh, as we say, and uh, we just went for it. It was a long shot, uh, but I managed to, even after all this distress and tiredness, I managed to succeed. <laughs> We, we have estimated uh, roughly between 750 and 800 meters because by that stage uh, things had broken, equipment had lost, my, my range finder had been lost overnight and one of my scopes, one bag had broken and it was, so it, it was becoming a distress, disastrous situation but by my watch from the point to where I shot the animal to the point of where the animal was was 650 meters of this level. It was a stressful moment also because that morning my horse was gone <laughs> because it was uh, one of the guys took it to do something. So I had all the meat and I had the trophy and the final scene was to be with the horse carrying the, the morale and me carrying the trophy with the, with the morale, the brownie morale in front as you see in the final scene but uh, the horse was gone so um, I had to uh, do the final scene and I wanted to go from uh, uh, light to darkness, so using the sunset shade. But every time we redone this, uh, the shadow was coming further. So I ended up carrying the the trophy for almost two hours, and you can see that I was a bit tired at the end. Uh, but it gave realism. <laughs> well, it's a spectacular result. Well done to Alberto for making it and Browning for funding it. And you can click on the link on the screen to watch it, or go to fchannel/morale.